Is SoundHound a buy or a sell? Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company, 3.1 billion market cap. They're trading at 825 a share and they have 370 million shares outstanding. SoundHound develops independent voice AI solutions. It has customers across automotive, TV, internet of things, and the customer service industry. The company was founded in 2005, headquartered in Santa Clara, California. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They generate very little revenue, so they have negative free cash flow each year. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's also negative every single year. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that really can't be negative. It has tripled since 2021, but still, $67 million of revenue is nothing. For a public company, it's nothing. Isn't this funny? Their revenue grows 47% each time period. Exactly 47%. I'm sure if you bring it out a decimal, it's not exact. You see what I mean? 46.9, 47.4, and 46.7. That is kind of funny. It rounded to 47% each time period. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 3.2 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $1.9 billion. We divide that by 370 million shares. And we got a calculated stock price of 510. They're trading at 825, so they're trading at a 62% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Do you think it's a buy or sell? Let me know in the comments. There are 100 companies in the same industry as sound, and if they have a number in red, they're worse than the median. If they have a number in blue, they're better. They only spend 1 million in CapEx. This should be red. They do have a good debt to equity ratio, 0.1 for every dollar of equity, 10 cents of debt. Of course, they don't pay a dividend. Negative free cash flow because they don't generate much revenue. They rank 31st in market cap, pretty close to the median, trading at 10 times book value. We can't look at that PE, negative earnings. We can't look at that price of free cash flow, negative free cash flow. And their revenue is 67 million, much lower than the median average. And I don't think they've been public five years, so we can't look at that five year annual revenue growth rate. They're trading fairly close to their 52 week high. They're trading at 825. The 52 week high is 10 and a quarter. 52 week low is a buck 62. So the stock is up a lot since the low. If you put $10,000 into this company when they started trading, you'd actually be up a little bit at $12,700 today. That's a 27% return. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 62% premium. I give them the ranking of three out of 10. I'm not too sure about this company. I have a feeling they're not gonna go anywhere. Would I buy it short term, two out of 10, long term, three out of 10. Pretty bearish on this company. Terrible ratios, one out of 10. Financials, three out of 10, because their revenue is up 200%, but it's still pretty low and they have negative free cash flow. Let's look at their latest 10Q. He has a third quarter of 2024. Revenue did double from last year. Last year, 13 million, now it's 25 million. Let's see what makes up the revenue. Of the 25 million of revenue, 17 million is hosted services, 3 million professional services, licensing 5 million, and only 78,000 of monetization. Hosted services is Houndify and their Amelia software platform. Here's a breakdown of their revenue by country. About half is in the US. It was only 800,000 last year, now it's over 13 million. Korea went down a lot. It was almost 10 million, now it's 3 million. France is down also, 850,000. Germany is down to 33,000. And other countries, 7.7 .7 million. Here's another breakdown of their revenue. Six million is product royalties. Subscriptions is 19 million. That's their bread and butter, subscriptions, because that's recurring revenue. Below revenue are their expenses, 13 million cost of revenue, marketing 8 million, R&D is almost 20 million, which is a majority of their revenue, 17 million general and administrative. So operating expenses much higher than revenue, so they have an operating loss of 34 million. They probably need to at least get two, 300 million of revenue before they break even. They spent 1.1 million of interest on their debt. They had a $10 million tax credit, so they have a net loss of 22 million. And they added a lot of shares. Last year, they had 240 million shares outstanding. Now they have 360 million. Let's look at a balance sheet. This is hard to read. Current assets, 181 million. 
Current liability, 70 million. So a really good current ratio. It's well above a two. They have a lot of cash, 135 million. Their biggest asset is intangible is 180 million. And they have 111 million of goodwill. Most of the goodwill is the acquisition of Amelia, 106 million. And Sync 3, 6 million. Their total assets, 500 million, up from 150 million. Total liabilities, 203 million, up from 122 million. They do have 40 million of long-term debt. It looks like they received this debt when they acquired Amelia. They don't just acquire the assets, they also acquire the company's debt as well. It mentions it right here. In connection with the Amelia acquisition, the company assumed the amended senior secured term facility. It looks like that debt has a maturity of 2026, so it's due in about a year and a half. Assets minus liabilities equals equity. They have 300 million of equity. They raised 1 billion from selling their business, selling stock. They lost 684 million from running their business. Accumulated deficit is a sum of all their prior net incomes. Let's look at a statement of cash flows. This is for the trailing nine months. The first section is operating cash flow. You start with your net loss of 92 million. Then you add back stock-based compensation. You add back depreciation. And then you have to adjust for changes in working capital. So they had a cash outflow of 76 million. Last year was 54 million. They're going to be burning a lot of cash for the next few years until they bring in a good amount of revenue. In their investing section, they only spent 560,000 of PP&E, 12 million in acquisitions. In their financing section, they added 287 million from selling stock. They added 11 million from the employees buying stock, and it looks like they paid 176 million on a term loan from the Amelia acquisition. So that's why they had to dilute shareholders to pay down this debt from that acquisition. Let's look at a stock on Simply Wall Street. It's last price, eight and a quarter, 3.1 billion market cap, up 30% in the past week. It's up nearly 300% in the past year. It started trading in mid-2022 at 10.35. And then just after seven, eight months, it came down to $1. That would have been a great time to pick up the stock. The reason the stock went from $1 to where it is today is the name of the company. That AI name creates so much buzz People think anything connected to AI is going to make a ton of money. And it could. They haven't yet, but they could in the future. Simply Wall Street does not have a value for the stock. Seven analysts price this stock exactly where it's trading at. Here's their revenue forecast. The projection is $84 million this year. Next year, $160 million. Then $200 million the following year. Here's their debt since 2020. The peak was $85 million in March 2024. They paid it all off, but it looks like they added some, probably from the acquisition. They did have negative equity at a bunch of points, but now their equity is much higher than their debt, so they have a good debt-to-equity ratio. They have much more cash than debt, so they could easily service the debt or pay it off if they need to. The CEO's salary went from a quarter million to 420000 Total compensation, 1.9 million, tenure as CEO, two and a half years. This is not a good sign, but only insider selling and a lot of selling, no buying at all. Look at this list, it keeps going on and on. Around 1.2 million insider shares were sold in the past year. 62% of the companies owned by the general public, 27% by institutions and 11% by insiders. Their biggest shareholders, Vanguard, then BlackRock. The founder of the company owns 4.7%, the CEO 4.5%, Schwab 0.7%, you see a lot of individual names on the list as well, 0.72.2%, and their employee count has gone down, which is not a good sign. It was almost 400, and now it's 260. And the ticker trades on the NASDAQ. So if you want to learn how to build your own discounted cash flow model so you can value stocks like me, click on the video in the top right corner. Thanks for watching.